God bless you. And thank you for tuning in to another Decision Time broadcast. My name is Elder Ernest Dunn, and I'm only here for a brief moment. Our pastor, Bishop Roosevelt Dunn, is up next. But before he comes, let me just share with you some, something that someone said to me. You know, life can be so busy at times. It's a blur. Have you ever experienced that? I know that I have. And this year has already picked up at a rapid pace. I'm sure you would agree with that. Well, Bishop is up to share with us on today how we need to be good stewards over the things that God has assigned us to. It is very possible that we have already neglected the assignment that God has given us. Don't let it go any further and don't change that dial. Bishop Dunn is up next with Gospel Stewardship. Luke, let us go to New Luke, the ninth chapter, the 57th verse. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto this certain man, Foxes have holes, and birds have nests, or the air have nests, but the Son of Man have no prayer to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But others said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another one also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go to them and say farewell unto them in my home, in my house. And Jesus replied, No man, having put his hands to the plow. And looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I'm going to turn to my thought. My thought is gospel stewardship. Stewardship. Gospel. Stewardship. We need to really preach the word with all power and authority. You got to give your all. You got to give your all. You can't give up. Suffering for Christ is part of ministering. Going through oppositions that you're not ready for is part of ministry. Gospel stewardship and trust with the good news of Christ. The good news. Every minister and every person that's saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost have been entrusted with the Word of God. And it's our duty to pray. It's our duty to study the Word from Genesis to Revelation and pick out what God wants you to preach and teach. You can't preach the whole Bible in one lesson. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, let a man so account of us as the minister of Christ Stewards of the mystery of God. Mystery of God. Now you know you got to pray to get the mystery. You got to pray to get the mystery. The revelation, the understanding, deal with the mystery with wisdom. God is nothing to play with. I see a whole lot of folks play in church. In the pulpit, 
in many places I've been, I've seen a lot of things, but God is nothing to play with. First Corinthians nine seventeen. For if I do this thing willingly, if I do it, God will not make any person do anything they don't want to do. He don't make you go to church. He don't make you pay your tithes. He don't make you visit the sick. He put it in the Word. And asked you to do it because you are a steward. You are to represent him. I am to represent God. And ever since I've been saved, that's what I've been doing. Representing God. I tried to represent him and let my light shine. That men might see that I am really trying to live saved. That means letting your light shine. That men like, might see your good works. That men might see your good works. So we do it willingly. I enjoy working for God. I enjoy hearing preachers. I enjoy going to church. I don't get tired of going to church. But some people do get tired. Some say so they're doing other things. But if you sold out for God, you got to do what God said do. Go where he said go. That's why I'm here. I came here because he said, come here. I was somewhere else. You were somewhere else. But God know the best place for you to be. He know what you need where he sent you. He know what you need. And he, he know who needs you. So when we understand the word of God and take it in and, and uh, live by it, don't talk about it. Live it. Live it. Look at somebody and say, live it. Hold on to it. It's observation, interpretation, and application. You got to apply this. You got to apply it. You can't just come to church and do this and do that. And then you go home and say, oh, we had good service. And you don't put it in your spirit. It's not in your mind. You know, for what did the preacher preach? I don't know. I know of it. He's up to this hollering. <laughs> you, he was just hollering. Trying to make us shout. I don't holler to make nobody shout. If the Holy Ghost don't do it, you ain't going to never shout. I know. The Holy Ghost have his time to use us to do whatever it's his will to do. Whatever it's his will to do. Read Galatians chapter 2 verse 7. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of uncircumcision was committed unto me. As That's the gospel, Paul. That's Paul. Okay, read on. Was committed unto me as the gospel of circumcision was unto Peter. Uh-huh. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. Mm -hmm. The same was mighty in me mm -hmm. toward the Gentiles. The gospel, the gospel. It should be mighty in you. It should be mighty in me. It's nothing but the gospel is power. All power. It's wisdom. All wisdom. It's understanding. All understanding because you're dealing with God. You're dealing with God. I see people just misuse the gospel. They do things that the anointing don't tell them to do. To make people do things. To make people do things. To motivate people to do things. To do that. You don't do that. Gospel. 
the stewardship. You're a steward. You're a nurse for God. You God nurse and doctor. He do the healing, but you the doctor. You can't do the healing. God do the healing. But you are the doctor that put the word out there, like the doctor put the word out in a hospital with medication. But your medication is so powerful. It healed cancer. It healed all your problems. You can't get anything from God until you sit down and pray and think things over and get where in the position that God wants you in. He don't want, you know, God don't have us. He gives us different gifts. He give us different gifts. Don't, don't try to do like anyone else, you know. Every once in a while I might holler a little bit, but I ain't going to holler because somebody else holler. I don't want to mess my lungs up. God has something special for each of us, male or female. If you feel with the Holy Ghost. You can give life to someone that's dying. I'm talking about spiritual. Someone that's sad. Someone that discouraged. Someone that don't know what to do. Someone that don't know how to make the right decision. God put that in the minister's hand. God did that. Jesus suffered. So sometime in our walk with God, we are going to suffer. But don't complain. Thank God. You suffered for Jesus. And he's going to deliver you and he's going to pay you for suffering. He's going to promote you. Every time I go through a problem, I was promoted. Read Psalm 75 and 6. I was promoted. And you will be promoted when you suffer for God. Have patience. You're learning something. That's, that brings forth promotion. When I got to move out, you better hurry up. Psalm 75 and 6. Okay. For promotion cometh neither from the east. It don't come from the east. It don't come from that college you go to for God. It don't come from that college. We're talking about godly knowledge now. We know college will prepare you for a job. We're not talking about that. All right, read, read, read. Nor from the west. Nor from the west. Nor from the south. Nor from the south. But God is the judge. Now, there's nowhere you can go to be promoted by God except to God. You can't go east and be promoted in the church unless it's God. You can't go south and be promoted unless it's God. I was, some of the places I went, but I really wasn't re- promoted until I got here because it was the time. I was promoted so many times I got tired because all there was money. The more you, you want to be promoted, you want to be there? You want to be a bishop? Better get you another job. (laughs) Better get you another job. And that goes for the ladies too. That's missionary. I want to be a. I want my license. I heard all this. I signed for them to get license, but after a while, they're calling them up there. Pay your report. Tell the 
truth. And you don't even go to church the night you're supposed to pay him. And that's a stripe against you. Folks start talking about, well, they don't, they don't do nothing. Observation, interpretation, application, better take it in. God will bless you and give you as much as you want whenever you want it. Whenever you want it. But you and me have to receive it. The Bible says, He that hungry and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. If you're not hungry, you don't eat nothing. If you're not hungry, you don't want nothing. Blessed is he that hungry. You got to be hungry. Some folks never hungry. Not for God. Not for growing in Christ. You got to chew on the word. You got to meditate. Meditate. Meditation is better. Medicine. He's able to take care of you. But you're going to suffer some. There's nothing wrong with suffering. If you go into the military, you suffer, you dig foxholes, you jump over fences, you crawl on your belly like a snake. Yes, I did. In Korea. <laughs> but God will take care of you. Yes, cast your jet, cast your cares on him for he cared for you he have a time to manifest himself to you the Bible said that God bless you according to your faith the blind man said he said what do you want me to do for you Lord that I might see he can, do you believe I can do it? He said, yeah, Lord. He said, according to your faith. And they received his sight. So according to my faith, according to your faith, you can receive whatever you want. Your heart desire because the Bible said he will give you your heart desire. Is that what it said? I'm trying to make it plain. That God have a blessing for you. Give me songs 78, 18, 19, 22, and 41. I'm, I will show you from those verses that what will hinder you. That song 78. Verse 18, 19, 22, 41. And they tempted God in their heart. And they tempted God in their heart. We have a lot of stuff in our heart. And God knows about it, all of it. They tempted God in their heart. All right, read, read, read. By asking meat for their lust. By asking God to bless them for their lust. All right, now let's leave that and go to James. Now hold it, we're going to come back there. Look at somebody and say, he almost finished. We're going to come back there. Go to James, I believe it's five I want in one. James 5 and 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Uh-huh. Your riches are corrupted. Uh-huh. And your garments are moth-eaten. Uh-huh. Your gold and silver is cankered. Uh-huh. And the rust of Everything you got, something wrong with it. Your money, 
your clothes. If you're not right with God. If you're not right with God. All right, read on a little bit further. And, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Uh-huh. And shall eat your flesh. Uh-huh. As it were fire. Read on. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Uh-huh. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields. Uh-huh. Which is of you kept back by fraud. Uh-huh. Crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of of the Lord Saboeth. Okay. Now we might come back to another verse or chapter over there, but let's go back to Psalms and take up where you left off. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Uh huh. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Now we have to be very cautious, church. Unconscious, if you don't understand the word. If you don't meditate on the word, the devil will slip this stuff in your mind. And you won't even think you're wrong. You don't let the devil slip up on you. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I'm come to have to give life in that more abundantly. I tell God I want good success. And I'm not going to get Filled with pride. But I don't want to stay down here. I want blessings from God. But I, I've learned how to accept those blessings. I learned how to have little. I learned to have a whole lot. I learned to have brand new cars. I learned, I learned how to do all these things. But never tempt God. And never become lifted up. Never think you're pretty. Because if you think you're pretty, it's only in your face. Because it's, it's not in your heart. And that's what God, the Bible said, men look at the outward appearance, right? But God looks at the heart. So I don't care what you think, God looking at your heart. And your face can be pretty, and your heart can be so ugly. You need to keep that in mind. Your heart can be so ugly. Whole lot of good-looking folks in the world. Whole lot of uh, handsome men, hope men, whole lot of pretty women. But they're ugly. And they're hard. And that's what God looking at. He don't care nothing about your hair. God looks on the heart. So don't tempt God like the Bible said. Go ahead, read on. I'm Verse 22. Because they believe not in God. They believe not in God. And you cannot believe in God actually tempting God at the same time. You can't believe in God uh, speaking against God. We have folks that's in the church, they can talk about God. They can't believe in God talking against God. I can't talk against God to someone, oh, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in holiness. I heard folks say that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in him. Now, I was talking against God, so I couldn't believe in him. Some folks do that, and they really believe they believe God. You can't believe God. You can't believe God with your heart full of lust. You can't believe it. You believe God when you get straight and you've been born again. And you have repented of your sin. And you faithful to God. You've done what God said to do. You make a sacrifice. You're obeying God. Okay, the, the same verse of scripture here. Let's go back to Psalm there. It tells you that there. Because they believed not in God. Because and, they believed not in God. And trusted not in his salvation. And didn't trust in his salvation. Now how are you going to believe God if you don't trust him?
It takes all of this understanding to really, really, really be blessed. Gifts and calling is read out is with, without repentance. We have some of the folk can do everything except stand on the head. But in order for you to be saved, you got to repent. You can't stand on your head and say, Lord, I'm on my head. Save me. All right, read, read, read. Verse 41. Yea, they turned back. And okay, they turned God. back. You know, when you don't believe God, when you don't honor God, when you don't obey God, you know what? Sooner or later, you turn him back. Matter of fact, you've already turned back, but you have some folks fool. All right, read, read. And limited the Holy One. Limit. Of don't Israel. limit God. Don't limit. I don't care what you want, how big it is, how long you think it's going to take you. Yeah, well, I would pray for that, but I know I got to wait so long and I don't have that kind of patience. You ain't going to get nothing. Because there are so many people who want to be blessed, but they don't take the time to receive the blessing. After Abraham had waited patiently on God, he received the promise. After we, after, after. I certainly want to thank you for tuning in to another Decision Time broadcast. Bishop has a unique way of reminding us our responsibilities and staying on task, those things that God gave us that should outweigh anything else. Listen, next week, we have another great word for you, this same time, this same station. But until then, remember, you have a miracle in your mouth. God bless you.